This is an excerpt from The Amalgam by John Paul Flossie. The bear had been dead for quite some time. The slick from its oily skin and hide drifted east on the final huffing breaths of the Sierra. Further out was only death, harshness, and the smoldering pain that robbed men of their remaining will. Miller was here to record, to study and report, and to dance around the edges of the place. Mono left scars of starts and stops, of colossal, life-changing, heartbreaking failure, but also a place of beauty and promise. If you could sh carve your stake here, you could carve about anywhere. Many had tried. Many had gassed out, given up, pulled up, and retreated like a snake returning to coil. Others kept digging, building, and leaving the traces of their societal experiments for all to see. Mine shafts, pilings, and foundations with no walls, the residue of what some would call frontier progress. The cause of the pull was the lake itself. Like a vortex, it spun with no knowledge of its power, drawing some to its surface and others to its depths. It was rumored to hold healing powers, but like most feeble promises, no one looked too hard for the truth of the matter. The lake also carried the scars of battle, traces of humans attempting to impose their will on something that could not reply. Miller didn't care. He was simply there to do a job. He pointed the jeep north and thought about home. Go home, murders! Yeah, look at this! A police escort of murderers with our tax dollars! That's why we're so poor! We can't have guns and butter! Well, hello everybody. Not a whole lot to talk about this week. I'm going to try to keep my hands to myself on this interview. I always tend to wave my arms around and I'm going to, I'm going to keep them planted. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was Tobias Wolff's book, Old School, which is beautiful. If you're looking for a new book, start there. It's a cross between what I would say is Dead Poets Society and Wonder Boys, two movies that I absolutely loved. It's very quiet. There are certain passages I read over and over again. I think it's really well done. Second point is Fuji released the X-T3. I know very little to nothing about it. I'm sure it's great. I did not get a pre-production model. I did not test it, and I will certainly never do an unboxing video if I ever buy one. In fact, if you ever see me doing an unboxing video, my advice is to come here to my house, come in quickly, and just neck punch. Just neck punch me with no warning and try to put me down. There's no reason why anyone should ever do an unboxing video. Point number three, we lost the bandit this week. Yes, we did. Smokey and the Bandit is no more. And uh, by the way, there are seven Smokey and the Bandit films in the series. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the reason I know that is I was born in rural Indiana and uh, my father owned a swamp, which should tell you everything you need to know about my family and why that movie series is our national anthem. I'll just leave it at that. Sorry, Bandit, rest in peace. Number four point, uh, one of the things that's bothered me over the past 10 years of working for Blurb, traveling the world and being a photographer, etc., 
is that there is a demographic of people in the in both photography and publishing industries who want you to believe that there is only one way to do something and that is their way or the way that puts money in their pocket now with publishing that could mean you have to go through a traditional publisher you have to play that game and in certain circumstances i think that that is a great game to play while in a huge percentage of other situations i do not think that's a smart play and with photography, that could mean telling you that you have to be on Instagram or you have to dumb your work down to a level that fits like the generic content world of photography. Let me just tell you this. All of that information is incorrect. It's fake, phony, false. It's not true. Your job as a creative is to be as creative as possible, whether it's publishing or making pictures or whatever, writing, whatever you're doing in life that's creative. You have a responsibility to the rest of society to do that to the best of your ability. That might mean that there is no place for you in these industries. You might not work as a professional photographer. You might not work with a professional publisher. It doesn't matter as long as you're able to make the best possible work that you can. I will leave it at that. I've seen far too many people dumb down, slow down, or get committed into really bad deals that have ended up impacting their career and their finances for a long, long time. Don't be one of those people. Believe in yourself. Lastly, for those of you who want to connect in the field, uh, most of these have been confirmed between now and the end of the year. Victoria, Seattle, Santa Fe, San Francisco, New York, Houston, and probably Sydney, maybe Perth as well, maybe even Brisbane. I don't know. That's it for today, by the way. I now have every piece of equipment known to the filmmaking universe. Not that I used it on this post, but you get the idea. I'll see you next time.